This first e-lecture about the phonological differences between received pronunciation and German mainly discusses the segmental differences and compares the sound systems of RP and modern High German with special emphasis on the difficulties from a German learner perspective. Let us start with a classification of the contrasts between the two sound systems with particular emphasis on the RP German differences. Most problems for German learners arise from the segmental differences between the two sound systems. These differences can be categorized in the following way. First of all, we can identify inventorial differences. That is, a phoneme or an allophone exists only in either of the two languages. For example, the rounded front vowel U in German or the low front vowel A in present day English or even on an allophonic level the dark L in RP. A second group of contrasts can be defined as distributional contrasts. Languages may share the same phoneme, however their allophones are distributed differently. For example the allophones of the alveolar fricative S in RP and German as pointed out here in German we do not have an allophone in word initial position. The third group can be referred to as realizational contrasts. Now here the phonemes of the two languages in focus might be similar, however their precise realization is different. For example if you look at the low back vowels in RP versus German or the realization of the R phoneme in both languages. Let us now inspect the segmental differences between both languages in a contrastive manner in order to find out the precise remedial actions to overcome these segmental difficulties at a later stage. Now here is the German system of monophthongs. In the e-lecture, the sound system of German, we defined 16 monophthongs in standard German presupposing a merger of the two front vowels E and E. So words like berries and bears are homophones, they would both be pronounced as Beeren. If we now add the system of RP monophthongs, you immediately see that their qualities are by and large different from the qualities of the German monophthongs. The following contrasts can be clearly identified. There are inventorial contrasts as pointed out already. There are no rounded front vowels in RP but that's not a problem for Germans rather for RP speakers who want to learn German. And then we have as already mentioned realizational contrasts that is the exact tongue position is different for almost each vowel in German as, as compared with RP. And finally we have distributional differences but here we need examples to find out the precise phonetic context of each segment. Let us now look at each RP monophthong, listen to its RP value and produce a worst case scenario from the point of view of a German learner. That is a scenario with the maximum deviation from the respective RP target value. Now here are the long monophthongs of RP. The E as in C is problematic for German learners in many ways. In RP it is slightly diphthongized. So let's listen. C. Germans often slightly raise the onset of this well, if you wish, diphthong, and monophthongize it. So just like German E. So the result would be something like C. In an even worse case, the result would be Z, because initial S is absent in German. But we will discuss that later. 
Here is the next one. The low back vowel is not problematic for Germans. We have few problems with this. Maybe we slightly front the RP value. So in RP it would be bra. And in German it would be something like bra. Now note that I used the German R here, in this case a voiced velar fricative, bra. As I said, the worst case scenario. The next one is the mid back vowel, caught. Now this is not problematic for Germans. The quality of this vowel is similar to its short German counterpart in German words like post or boss. So caught caught is not really a problem. Maybe the German value is a little bit lower. In the high back vowel U we have the same problem as with E. Now in RP it is slightly diphthongized. Germans often slightly raise the onset again and monophthongize it just like German U. So instead of saying two most Germans would remember in a worst case scenario come up with two. Two. The last long monophthong is really problematic for Germans. It occurs in words such as fur. Fur. Now this vowel involves two problems. It doesn't exist in German, thus a clear-cut inventorial difference. Instead, it is replaced by a rounded front vowel ö in many cases, and like all words with a final orthographical r in German, the offset is the central vowel a in our worst case. So instead of saying fur, Germans might come up with something like für, für, and this is a problem. So, as a summary, the two most problematic long monophthongs are the two high vowels, which are both slightly diphthongized in RP, and the central high vowel, which has no German equivalent. Let us now add the short monophthongs. Now, the short E is relatively unproblematic. Sometimes it is made a little bit too high by German speakers of RP, since German words like mist bist, kind, etc. involve a slightly higher short e than the one in RP which is bit. So bit often comes out a little bit higher bit. The next one is the mid vowel e and here bet. Bet is not really a problematic. Some native, non-native speakers often make it too long or too low. The low front vowel is an enormous problem. This vowel, referred to as short a or as ash, is a problem for German learners of RP because there is no German equivalent. It should be a low front vowel. Most German learners of present-day English, however, use a mid-low A or even a mid-high A instead, making bed and bad homophones. So this is the target, bat. And this is what many Germans say, bet. Again, bat. Very low. The low back vowel O is not problematic. Since the vowel can be found in German in Boss, but it is slightly higher in German, but the differences can be ignored by and large. The short U, as in put, again is unproblematic for Germans. It is almost identical with its German counterparts in words such as Kuss or Bus. Now the wedge, the low central vowel, seems to become more and more centralized in RP approaching the schwa. Many non-natives make it too low. So Germans often come up with something like but. 
using the German central R. However, but it is a little bit higher and backed approaching the schwa as I already said. The last monophthong, the central one, is unproblematic for Germans theoretically because German has the schwa as well in unstressed position. However, since the word we can see here, letter, letter involves this orthographical R again, Germans are often tempted to replace this by the low central vowel A, coming up with a pronunciation such as letter, letter. In summary, the short A or ASH is a problem case for Germans. If it is realized with the German mid to mid low vowel as in hätte, numerous homophones will emerge. For example, we would get homophones such as bed versus bad, bet versus bat, or take Batman, the famous movie figure, a man who is a bat, versus Batman, men who bet, which would all be identical for many German learners of RP. So my advice to all Germans is make the short A as low and front as possible. To produce the RP words bat, bad, man, use the German short A as in man rather than the mid-high front vowel E as in mena. Let us now turn our attention to the diphthongs of RP and the particular contrasts between RP and German. Both present-day English RP and German have eight diphthongs, among them several upgliding diphthongs. The remaining diphthongs all occur in words with a post-vocalic orthographical R. In RP we have things like near, hair and sure. The examples of modern High German would be Tier, Tür, Tier and Tor. Whereas the R triggers a final schwa as diphthongal offset in RP, resulting in a true ingliding diphthong, it triggers the central A in German, making the diphthong downgliding. So let's look at these diphthongs first. Here is the first one. Near versus Nia. Here is the RP value. Nia. The next one is hair. Hair versus hair. Note that the onset would be far too high in German. And here's the last ingliding one. In RP it is sure. And Germans would most likely come up with something like schua. So my advice to all German speakers of RP is try to ignore the orthographical R and its German low A realization. Realize the offset by means of a schwa instead. The remaining diphthongs are all upgliding. Here is the first one. The A. Say. Say. Now this diphthong is problematic for Germans who often use the high long German monophthong E instead. So instead of saying say, we would come up with something like say. By the way, here in this example, the initial S is also problematic. It has no allophone in initial position in German. Thus, Germans might even come up with something like Z because they have problems with words starting in S. Instead of saying symbol, they would say symbol, sex and super. All these are typical German problems with present day English. The diphthong I is not a problem at all. By. It almost exists in the same realization in German. The diphthong OI is also unproblematic because we have a similar case in German. Boy. Of the remaining diphthongs, AU is also not problematic at all. Now. Now would clearly be realized as now. Perhaps the onset of that diphthong is a little bit more 
fronted in German. The remaining one is a problem. In RP it is no. O. Now this diphthong is problematic because it is often replaced by the long O, the closest German equivalent. As a summary, all ingliding diphthongs are problematic for German learners of RP. The orthographical R triggers the German short R and thus makes the offset too low. Let us finally take a brief look at the consonantal contrasts. Now the comparison of the two consonantal systems can be done systematically using our classification of contrasts. For example, there are a number of inventorial differences. Now one of them is the use of this one here, the je as in vision. It simply is not used in German, as you can see here. Another one concerns the labiovelar approximant, as in wet, quick and which. Again, this position would be empty on the German consonantal chart. The dental fricatives are both problematic, so thin and then would be problematic for German learners. So here is another gap in the German system if you compare the two consonantal charts. Now what can Germans do in these cases? Training, animations and constant articulation, perhaps as a last resort the replacement by alternative phonemes. So for example there is maybe an ultimate possibility which is not really recommendable, but if nothing else helps, you can do it. Replace the dental fricatives by the labiodental ones. If you hold your hand in front of your mouth, you can't see the difference. So, then, 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 then. Could you hear the difference? Then, then, then. Well, almost no audible difference. Well, and on the allophonic level, there are differences in the realization of the Le, the alveolar lateral approximant in German, it has no dark L realization, whereas in RP we clearly find the dark L in pill. And a similar case applies to the R, where we have an alveolar approximant in RP, but in German we have various possibilities ranging from alveolar trill to uvula, trill and fricatives. These latter problems, the R and the L phoneme, can also be termed realizational because they both exist in RP as well as in German, but the allophonic realization is different. Finally, we have some distributional problems and these concern the alveolar fricative, where we have no contextual restrictions in RP. In German, by contrast, the initial alveolar fricative does not exist. As I pointed out earlier on, words such as say, sun, symbol, etc. might be a problem for German learners. A similar case can be found in the realization of this one, the CH, the post-alveolar affricate which exists in both languages. In English there is no restriction, no con contextual restriction. In German, by contrast, we only find this in final position in words such as kitsch and much. In initial position it exists, but many Germans don't use it. Instead of saying Tscheche or Tschüss, they say Tscheche or Schuss. As a result, if they apply this substitution to English, words such as chin and shin would become homophones. Not a very desirable effect. Well, so much for an overview of the segmental contrast between RP and modern High German. In a follow-up e-lecture, RP versus German 2, we will first of all summarize these differences here 
and then discuss and exemplify further problems for German learners of RP. And eventually we will suggest remedial action. See you there.